Hello everyone, K Kim here from the Traders Club to TradersClub.com. Thanks for tuning in for tonight's uh, market commentary video. Um, I apologize, I, I was, I did have planned to do a live midweek update for you guys tonight. Uh, I just found that, I found out last night that I was not able to do that because I had this important meeting that I had to attend today. So actually, uh, just it's, it's around you know it's around seven o'clock here in the Twin Cities, and I you know uh, it's a little bit late. But I, I did promise uh, to my followers that I was going to post a video tonight so that I can give, at, least, at least give you guys a kind of a sentiment of the market. So here we go. Uh, looking at this, I, today I do want to look at uh, three indices here, Dow Jones, uh, S&P 500, and, and NASDAQ. We'll look at these on these di Diamond, Spider, and Qs. And then we'll look at Apple and Tesla. Those are always interesting. And Boston Scientific, I recently wrote an article on it, and that's one of our holdings there so we'll talk about that as well and we'll, we'll end the video and i promise it won't be too long i'm uh, looking at s&p 500 first of all something that i've been uh, in fact emphatically uh talking about and tweeting out is that you know look at 50 minute chart or 65 minute chart rather and look at your 50 ema as long as we have a rising 50 ema as long as we we continue to cultivate higher lows and higher highs which we've been we, we continue to continue been doing a I man the benefit of the doubt continues to go to the buyers why right? right so what is the definition of a of, a, of an uptrend higher lows and higher highs do we have that yes we do we got higher lows and higher highs and it is it is interesting how it has continued to respect that 50 ma again it, it's not because everybody's watching you know 65 minutes are 50 ma that's not why this level continues to work most people do not have the sophisticated system or sophisticated technical analysis knowledge it's, it's just human instinct where these short-term traders understand that hey once we saw this type of pullback i bought it and i made money so i did it here i made money so i'm going to do it again here people who are trying to short it here they didn't make money so when it happened again next time they changed its views instead of shorting at that level well i'm gonna go long this is that's precise that's the reason right is what everybody asks why did it bounce why is it bounce this morning what happened what why did this happen why did this happen what news came out sometimes there's no rational you know uh rational explanation for all the moves i mean why would that's foolish to ask why did this happen yes there's sometimes certain news involved and that affects certain move and i get that but there are times many times it's just it's just because that's what the majority of people feel like buying they felt like buying and this vicinity so it did well, why did it come down? Well, after certain certain up move, people want to take profits. So it came down. That's it. Sometimes that's all it is. Especially when we're looking at like a minor term. We're just looking at what since since what is it? Since uh, early February and this is April. So this is like about a month and a half data there. Do you think just econo economic data like there was some kind of different like you know some kind of this 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 you know, profound uh, data or news came out and made this, you know, made this kind of move. No, <laughs> that's not what happened there. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. Anyway, so uh, looking at the daily chart though, we kind of have what it looks like a falling to type of method. Uh, what that is, is it looks a lot like this one right here. You can see that we have a bullish move and then we got this, uh, you know, kind of a two days of falling type of candles here. Almost look like a bull flag maybe here. Like, I'll zoom in here, you guys can see a little bit closely. Um, if you guys are into uh, you know doing your technical analysis or looking at your candle patterns, so you can see with a bullish candle, and then we fall, you know we you know we pull back a little bit, and, and that's what we call you know falling to or right or, or you know bullish falling to, and then you can see we had a bullish day there, closing above the prior resistance, and we continued on here, and we have something similar. The only problem with this pattern right now is that we have not yet gotten above the prior resistance, so. You know, you know, micro term. Uh, you know, you want to see, you want to see minor term, micro term. Uh, you know, uh, in sentiment to be bullish and at least get back up this resistance about 209, 210. You want to see this in clearing, clearing above the resistance. As far as the sentiment is concerned, though, uh, we have all resistance. You can see the prior resistance becoming new support. And we just talked about 65 minutes or 50 MA, how it's continued to hold that level, right? And also looking at daily chart, that old resistance 
is becoming new support and we have pretty dominant bullish candle there which that suggests there's a good chance that we may see continuation to the upside towards end of the week here we got two more trading days uh, that uh, we have left this week but again which I've been talking about this is gonna be important prominent and pretty eminent resistance that everybody's gonna be watching I'm not I'm not calling it preeminent because it's above all things what I'm saying is this uh, like I iterated before you know, buyers tried really, really hard to get above this level. You can see how many times buyers tried it hard. And when they failed, they failed in miserably. And when the bears came out, bears came out hard. They were fearful, right? For Russia, they, they came, and this took three days. And here, I mean, it took about two weeks or so. I mean, how fast they bring it down. Bears are lingering around in this vicinity. And bulls know this. Buyers know that in any moment, this fierce bears can come and just completely attack the bulls and do something like that. It is possible that we don't have a tangible data to prove that that's what's gonna happen, that it is possible because it happened. You know, about three months ago it happened, and it happened uh, last year, July, August, and September. You know, something that I always talk about is that the these resistance level works not because everybody's watching this resistance level. It's because human beings, we tend to remember extreme, uh, you know, extreme level of experience, like euphoric level of pleasant or pleasure, or we tend to remember the times when it was very painful. Those two, if you just look at, if you remember your childhood, do you, you know, you always, you tend to remember you tend to remember when you're very, very happy or when you're very, very angry. You don't tend to remember like the kind of in-between time. So that's why this, so buyers remember this. As the buyers continue to move higher, it remembers this. It remembers this. So that's kind of what I'm saying is it is going to be important level how it deals with that level once we get to that level. Again, we're, I'm just talking about intermediate term here, kind of a, you know, and I've, I've done, I've, I've, read, I, I've, I've written an article called The Uptrend is Not Dead, uh, Bulls One Last, the One Final Fight, that's, that's on my blog, twotradersclub.com, looking at primate, major primary term uptrend. And we're not gonna talk about this. So if you wanna learn more about major primary term, you know, going back to 2009, that's the sentiment of it. Go back to my blog, 2tradersclub.com, and there's two article. One is called The Uptrend Is Not Dead. The other one that I wrote, like, you know, like back in, like, early, like, 2016, January. If, or actually, I think late December, January, um, Bulls One Last Fight. And that's kind of what we're seeing here, one last fight from the Bulls. The reason I came up with that is that because, obviously, looking at a historical perspective, bears, buyers... At buyers, at especially when you have this prolonged uptrend, they're not gonna just let bear. They're not gonna just let. They're not gonna just roll red carpet, and and welcome bears, welcome bears, and take over everything. They're not gonna do that. They are going to put up a fight, at least one last fight. The biggest question is that is this one last fight fight is gonna become so you know, profound and so strong that it's going to completely reverse everything and resume back up to this primary term uptrend and continue higher? Or is this fierce for bears gonna come and just bring it down? And that just was that one last fight and that's it. And then bulls going to let bears come in and take over the whole thing. Well, Nobody knows the answer to that question as of today. What we need to know, what we need to do once we get to this level, we'll have to deal with it. So I think, you know, something I've been talking about here since we got a bullish divergence here, we talked about how there's a bullish divergence. I did a video back in what? Early February, there was a bullish divergence, and then we move higher. And if we continue to move higher, we got double bottom. And then once we break this uh, neckline here above that 50 MA, where the 50 and 10, 20, they're crossing back up, then we have confirmation of double bottom, which we did. And, and then I talked about this level here, this downturn resistance. Are we going to break above this level? If we do break above that level, buyers are going to gain a lot of confidence. We saw a gap up and continuation. And ever since then, but you know, we're, we saw this couple of days of pullbacks. And 
and whatnot. That's how the market moves. But we continue to see the dip buyers because buyers have gained a lot of its momentum and a lot of its confidence from all these moves here. So I think as they start to move higher, we're gonna we're gonna meet with you know a boss. Right, so if you look at this kind of level here, we 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 had these these uh, some challenges and things for the buyers, but I think we're gonna meet the boss here, the bear boss, the 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 monster, right, the 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 killer here. So it will be very very interesting to fight. I mean, this will be the fight of century. I don't know about century, but at least you know we you want to see where who's gonna win. Is a bulls gonna win or the bears gonna win? And I think it's all gonna happen in this vicinity, uh, below 211, above 206. This is, is gonna be where things gonna get very, very interesting. So I'm very, very eager to find out, eager to watch what's gonna happen here. So I think, uh, you know, just looking at the sentiment here though, I think there's a good chance we'll continue to ground higher and see how it plays out there. Quickly though, I just spent 10 minutes on Spider. I didn't mean to, but looking at Dow Jones here, uh, there's a little bit different story on the Dow Jones. Dow Jones, we actually clear. Again, we're looking at diamond though. We actually clear above this resistance. Doesn't mean that it's 100% guaranteed it's going to continue higher and we just go to the moon. That's not what it means because we could have a head fake here. We could have a traps and shenanigans. But it means that buyers are starting to gain... Um, what's the good word here? Starting to find some edge. Because when we looked at S&P 500, we're still below this prominent downtrend resistance. But on the Dow Jones, we're staying above it. Right? So I think there's a, th th I think which that suggests it favors the buyers. And then we pull back and then we're retesting it as a new support. Right? All resistance becoming new support. And even minor term, all resistance becoming new support. And we saw that bullish move today right on the 10 minute. If you look at a diamond, go to diamond 65 minute chart on the 65 minute chart on the 50 MA, how, you know, I mean, every single indices, you just go to every single indices and look at your 65 minutes on 50 MA, how well it has been respecting here last month and a half or so, right? Another one is interesting to note that, uh, note that if you go to mid caps, mid cap also, look at this, all resistance, new support and we're breaking above the downtrend resistance again i have to say this because so many people just think that just because it clear above the resistance it means that we're going to make new all-time highs that's not what it means it means this current sentiment current sentiment as we uh, gather these evidences current sentiment it is starting to favor the buyers it is starting to favor the buyers. Again, S&P 500 is still below this downtrend resistance, but Dow Jones, we're, start, we're holding above that level. Mid caps also holding above that level. And it's still be interesting here when we look at NASDAQ here on the Qs. On the Qs, I mean, I can't even do this right here. We're just poking his head up. Do you see this? On trend resistance here 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 we are just poking his head up above this downtrend resistance are we seeing is the Dow Jones and the mid caps and the Nasdaq forecasting or foreseeing what could happen on the S&P 500 again S&P 500 is still below this downtrend resistance level but on the Qs and the mid caps and the Dow Jones, we are holding, we're clearing of this downtrend resistance. I think, I think, I think those information or the data we're seeing on the Dow Jones and mid caps and on the Qs, I think they're very, very important because I think if all the indices are staying below this downtrend resistance, and once we get to that resistance level on the spider, I think the bears would have so much more enthusiasm to what they can bring the pain that can bring to the buyers. But for the fact that Qs and the Dow and the mid caps are holding above this, and we still need to see more though, it's still early to tell if the buyers are really, really gonna thrive after that. Are the bears starting to lose some of its grip, right? That's kind of what I'm saying. And we need more, we need more data to conclude anything at this point. But some of the good, some of the good uh, data, some of the good evidences we're seeing that favors the buyers as of today. 
right? So as far as the market is concerned, I you know I, obviously the sentiment is bullish in the minor term. We continue to have you know higher lows and higher highs in the minor term. There, 50, 65 minutes are 50 MA is you know if we continue to respect that level. Next level resistance will 694 on Spider. If we stay, if we break above that level, I think the major level is this right here again about two and again it's it's just gonna be all in this vicinity, right? It's gonna be about 210 or so. This is level to watch there, and then. And I'll follow with you guys maybe next week or so and, and, and let you guys know what I think. Apple, um, I slightly adjusted my downtrend resistance here um, for the fact that we had that 200 SMA coming down. I think that 200 SMA coming down did some toil on the, you know, the at least minor term buyers there. So we threw a little bit of strings. I came down, but today we saw, we're seeing some bullish move here. Again, this is the level that we've been talking about. I mean, this is a level, one level, one way. We've been talking about since back in $93. And we talked about bullish divergence on the daily chart and 65 minute chart. We talked about how there was a clandestine buyers in this vicinity. And we saw that how we are starting to, you know, um, break above this prior resistance. And once once we start seeing 50 MA, 10 MA, 20 MA, they're starting crossing back up. We're seeing the minor term bulls are starting to gain momentum. And then we saw some gap up here and we got all the way back up to this kind of a major resistance level. And which is coinciding with the 111, 108 uh, pivotal level there. So as long as we stay below this level, you know, things are going to be difficult for the buyers. The best way for the buyers to just break above it is gap it up. Right, what I call jumping over the fence. Don't want to deal with this resistance. Sometimes what they will do is they just gap it up and go. That will be the easiest way. A lot of times it will stay here for a little while and then get up. But I'm not sure how it's going to play out. But if we can able to get above 111, 112 here, I think there's a good chance we'll get up and fill this gap at 120. If we get above that, I think there's a good chance we get even 123, 32. And last time on my last article, uh. What did I say? Uh, buyer's hope or seller's target and the and buyer's hope. Uh, I talked about how buyers can able to you know come back from this and reverses back up will be something like this, right? If we're the line chart, you can able to see this this huge inverted head and shoulder to able to reverse back up. But again, first things first, this resistance here. That's important level. Again, I don't want to go back and talk about it. I talked about monthly chart, the primary term option, all of that on my last article. Uh, I forgot the title of it. <laughs> it's my own article. I wrote like, oh, I forgot the title of that. But just to tradersclub.com, there's a, my recent, most recent Apple article where I talked about the monthly chart here and how we're holding this level and talked about how there's a you know evening star morning star and uh, uptrend support and all of that so which you know in looking at a primary term perspective that favors the buyers quickly let's go to tesla here um tesla we talked about you know last time i did a video on tesla here you know we talked about this level you know becoming all you know this was a prominent resistance we cleared that level first thing we wanted to see is what equal highs we did that this is a high it made an equal highs and what you want to see a pullback at higher low and then it pulls back up here and then clear above this resistance we are no longer in this downtrend why because we're no longer cultivating what lower lows and lower highs we're no longer cultivating that we're cultivating i mean it's just almost parabolic, but we're cultivating higher lows and higher highs. What does that mean? We're in an uptrend. Um, some of the daily chart oscillators are giving me, you know, overbought status here. RSI, Stochastic, and MACD here. They're getting into this level. I mean, they can continue to grind higher, but uh, uh, we are getting into the overbought status. And everybody, I mean, I mean, we don't even have, we don't even need oscillators for that. I mean, look at this move. I mean, that's definitely uh, definitely look like overbought. But again, you know, looking at just historically though, Tesla would have this kind of a parabolic move because it's very hyped up stock. It's very emotional stock. A lot of these investors and traders get very, very hyped up. But keep in mind, it doesn't go forever. Tesla goes up, comes down. 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 Tesla goes up. I, I could grind a little higher or maybe continue. But as far as the probability is concerned, there could be a pullback. So I, you know what, you want to go long on Tesla? I, I wouldn't suggest go long here. 
if anything, take profits here. But there's a good chance we're just right in this resistance level. There are a good chance we'll get to about maybe even 280. But I think we're getting to the overbought status. And, you know, we, you know, I, I think we are uh, overbought. And so I think there's a good chance that it's in, this thing can pull back. I think it's better to go long after it's pulled back. But it looks bullish here. We're no longer uh, cultivating a downtrend there. So Tesla looking good. And I think it's, it's worth watching. And then any kind of a, you know, significant pullback, I think there's a good chance that we'll We'll, uh, we'll continue higher there. So we'll continue to watch it. Boston Scientific, and I'll end with this. Uh, Boston Scientific, we've been, uh, I've been writing article on Boston Scientific since, you know, like late 2014 there. We've been involved in since then. Uh, this is very much, you know, looking at, you know, really though, looking at more of a monthly chart is important. And if you just look at this here, I mean, we're under the water, under the water, under the water downtrend, and then we're start to what? We're start to surfing here, all right? surfing here we're staying above that so this is imperative that you understand if you want to understand where the market is or the stock is going in a big picture you want to look at a monthly chart you want to look at a weekly chart you want to look at every single uh you know uh perspective every single time frame you know so so you so when we go back to daily chart we have a very well cultivated primary to mob trend what does that mean? Higher lows and higher highs, which means we're on an uptrend, right? And uh, we are respecting some of these prior resistance levels very, very well, but it also likes to stair step higher. I mean, do you see this right here? I mean, that all resistance becoming new support, all resistance becoming new support, all resistance becoming new support here, here, and then that all resistance became new support. We pulled back with the market, sh market shook here the earliest year, and then you can see where you know just despite of the market's condition i mean this boston side thing has been doing very very well here we'll continue to hold our positions i think uh our next i think that ne next target is about 21 22 uh if we can able to some find some good momentum 2352 is possible but i i like this long term boston scientific i mean i like this i mean i i I think there's even chance that in next five years or so that we could all get all the way up here, even thirty, forty dollars, and so definitely that's a, that's a stock to watch there. Um, yeah, that's everything. Twenty two minutes uh, is eight minutes shorter than my normal videos, or uh, twelve minutes or. 18 minutes usually my videos are 30 minutes 40 minutes but i want to quickly uh you know give you guys uh my thought on the market and i think market deep buyers will continue to show up in this market and it looks like we're gonna continue grind higher but again don't forget this level is a level to watch and um i'll follow with you guys once we get to that level and see how the market deals with that level we'll go from there have a great uh night and uh, if you have any questions feel free to use the comment section below on my blog to ask any questions there have a great night